Hello everybody, welcome back to the Young Fan Pogs and welcome to another match reaction and match day experience. It was another away day as Oxygen had to travel to Shrewsbury Town yesterday. What an incredible atmosphere. What an incredible three points for Oxygen United today. And we were reacting and digesting all of that amazing action. And uh, yeah, I want to be hearing your thoughts, of course, in the comments down below. What did you think of the performance from Oxygen United? Were you there? Did you listen to it? Whatever. What does it mean for Oxygen United going forward as we now head into only eight games remaining of this League One campaign? Our Oxygen are going to finish in the top six. Well, that performance and that three points is going to prove, or I think might prove pivotal in our big race for that top six finish. Of course, if you support Oxygen United, let me know. So, Shrewsbury Town, let me know as well. And also, maybe you're not an Oxford fan or a Shrewsbury Town fan. Let me know how your team did in the comments down below. I will be doing my match week 30. 8 or 39, I forgot the match week. Anyway, this weekend's action, I'll be doing my roundup on the channel. So, yeah, I'll be, that's where I'll be digesting all of the action, really, and look at the league table as a whole and, yeah, individually your teams. And that's, of course, where you can get me know properly in the comments. But let me know in this one as well, because I think this one is going to be really, really interesting. But I'm going to have a look at some few points. The day after now, this is the morning after uh, of the game, and I've had time to sleep on it, digest it. Um, and my just general thoughts of it, it was a really, really good atmosphere, a really, really good place. And Shrewsbury, I've got to be honest, I think it was a really, really nice place in, in terms of, um, I, I said, it's not a bad stadium either. It's a really quite nice facility they've got there in terms of the stadium. I mean, anything's better than a three-sided stadium, of course, but it is a really, really quite nice facility. Um, and... Um, Again, we we knew going into this game as well. They are, I think, twentieth in the league, but but they're not going to be not, not going to be an easy test. They drawn to Rotherham uh, already this season, quite recently. Um, they, they, you know, I mean, they've caused upsets for a lot of teams, especially teams trying to get into that top six. They have caused problems for those sort of teams. And a banana skin was 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 something that I was always thinking could be playing on the Oxford United players' minds, especially when that team came out. Messino hasn't had a league start since December 2020. Comes into a back three next to Steve Seddon, who's played left wing back, uh, left back. He's now playing left centre back, and he's not in great form um, at the moment. Looks like he's lacking confidence at the moment. He's having to come in and play in a position that he's definitely, definitely not quite comfortable with. Next to a 35 year old uh, Messina, like I said, who hasn't played uh, a league star since December uh, 2020. He has got Luke McNally next to him, who of course has been in brilliant form this season. And once again yesterday, I thought it was really, really good. Other than that, the attack was 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 fairly similar. Other than George Baldock, uh, sorry, Sam Baldock, not George Baldock, Sam Baldock, his brother, uh, of course, uh, out with a knee injury. So it was uh, Nathan Holland playing behind uh, the two strikers and Gavin White, who normally plays in that role, playing next to Matty Taylor up front. It was uh, Herbie Kane and Brannigan in the two, uh, as the two in midfield, a very, very comfortable pair um, of hands in the two midfield, or should I say feet uh, in the midfield. They've done brilliantly well this season. Both of those players have been so, so good. Um, and once again, I thought yesterday they were really, really important. Cameron Brandon, of course, getting that all-important penalty to send Oxford fans away with the three points. And then on the flanks, it was uh, Ryan Williams on the left-hand side and Mark Sykes uh, on the right. Um, so, you know, a, a really, really good, I think, structured 3-4-1-2 formation. Um and one that was going to be, we were forced into making those sort of changes. We were forced into making quite a few uh, different tactical changes and we'd have to have changed a little bit. But we stayed with the same system. I think that's quite interesting, you know, what, what Carl Robinson did there. He decided to go with the same system. He decided to go with uh, the same formation. He, he maybe could have tried a, a back four with Massinho and McNally, but I think he probably felt that you've got, you know, no disrespect to Massinho. He's getting on a little bit now. He hasn't got the pace he did when he was 20, uh, 25, now being 35. Um, so he has that cover next to me. He's got Luke McNally, he's a very, very quick centre-back. He's got Steve Seddon, who, you know, isn't in great form, but he's a full-back. He's got the pace about him as well. And although it's not a comfortable position, left-sided of a centre-back is going to be much more comfortable um, than of a three than he would be left in, in a two. I wouldn't want to play Steve Seddon as one of two centre-backs. Uh, I think that might be a going a little bit too far with, with chopping and changing different positions and trying to, you know, put, put, put players in positions they're definitely not comfortable. That might be taking it a little bit too far. So the three at the back, he didn't change the system. He decided to stay with the system. And in terms of personal now changed. I think he, that was probably probably a big reason why he did that. I don't think you want to be playing players in positions where they haven't got the suitable cover and they haven't got players around them that, that are similar in those positions. Um, and as the game went on and, and, and as we, you know, we took the lead fairly early in that first half, we started the game and started the first half, I thought, really quite in control. I, I was really, really impressive. Oxford, the tempo was good, similar to Burton's first half, really, the week before where we ended up scoring, I think it was four goals in the first half. Obviously, the only thing lacking was we were only one nil up. And, you know, the chances and the clear-cut chances and ultimately goals was 
the one thing that was missing, which of course is crucial. But the control and the tempo really is what was similar to Burton. We definitely looked in control of the game. We were definitely more, and I'll come back to this, but definitely proactive instead of reactive. And like, the reason why I'll bring that up again is because in the second half, I think that flipped slightly. I thought it really reactive in the first, uh, sorry, yeah, really, sorry, proactive in the first half compared to the second half where I thought we weren't as in control. The tempo dropped a little bit. We didn't look, we, we did look a little bit reactive. I think shows we definitely improved in that second half. And um, they got the goal in the second half as well. Got their, got their equalising goal in the second half. But I thought in the first half, we were definitely in control, definitely had a serious tempo about us. And I thought the short, sharp passing and keeping the ball was something that Carl Robinson has installed into his players since he joined the football club. I think he definitely, definitely, I think it definitely stayed the same uh, and was a sort of a real, you know, definitely an advert for what he what his philosophy really shows in that first half. Like I said, in the second half, unfortunately, similar to Burton, the second half was a little bit of a drop off. And I listened to what Carmenton had to say as well. This is all the beauty of doing it the day after. I get to listen to the the interviews and get to listen to the reaction from the managers and from the players. And something that Carl Robinson said was we weren't good in the second half, but how much of that is shows we've been much better in the second half. I think he has got a point. I, I, I think he, I, I, but I also think he was very, very fair in his assessment as well. I think he was very, very honest in saying we weren't good enough um, in that second half. It definitely was a lack and, and definitely a drop of, of quality in that second half. And it was similar, again, to Burton. I keep coming back to that game. Uh, but that was when Sam Bullock came off injured uh, and then there was a real drop-off there. There wasn't really anything like that that happened in the second half. You just felt that we ca- we came out and we didn't look as on it. We didn't look as in control of the game. And Shrewsbury, I think, uh, similar to what Carl Robinson had to say as well, I think he really has got a point. I think there really was a difference in Shrewsbury play. They definitely did look better. They definitely looked like they wanted the game a little bit more in that second half. And they got a well-deserved equalising goal. Now, the pressure was on Oxford. They got their goal, um, Shrewsbury, and then they could have probably got a few more. I think Shrewsbury could have got a few more. Actually, they had a really good chance. I think I've got it on the match day experience. I mean, the ball came in. It was a lovely ball over the top of the fullback Bennett, and he put a ball back into the penalty area. It was like his back to goal. He turned uh, the forward and skied it over the bar. I mean, to be fair, that was a quite a big chance in the game. Eastwood had a really big save in the first half as well. Shrewsbury had their chances in the game, and I think Oxford rode their luck at points. But I think you're going to have to ride your luck at points, especially not just in the game, but across the season. I thought today, sorry, yes, I keep saying today like it was today, but yesterday it was a really, really important three points. Was it the best performance? No. Was it a, a, a blow me away performance when we come away going, we, we made Shrewsbury look poor? Absolutely not. It shows we look really quite good. I think in the second half, we arguably made them look much better than maybe they were. They were good, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but I think if we were playing at a higher level, we probably could have comfortably beaten Shrewsbury. I think we comfortably beat Shrewsbury earlier on in the season. But I think, to be honest, I thought Shrewsbury did look quite good in that second half and probably will feel that they want to come away with at least a point, maybe even win the game. And I wouldn't be completely against that argument, really. I thought Shrewsbury looked much better in that second half and did cause lots of problems. We got forward on a sort of a counter-attack breakaway. Ryan Williams used his pace, and that's where the system works really well, with Ryan Williams uh, playing on that side, able to run in court. We know the pace he's got. He's, he used to be a winger. He's now playing as a fullback or as a wingback, if you like, but he's got that outlet. And Oxford have got that outlet with this system where they can play with really, really quick, creative fullbacks uh, or, or midfielders or, or wide midfielders, if you like. Um, and Rick Williams goes into the penalty area. Again, from the angle, because they switched ends. Normally, uh, the away team get, of course, their goal. Uh, you get behind the goal you're scoring in for the second half. We were on the other side of it. So from where we saw, we saw Ryan Williams go down. We did see some sort of, definitely some sort of collision. Whether or not it was a, enough contact for a penalty, I don't know. The referee gave the penalty. We scored the penalty. And uh, that was a big relief. I do feel a little bit more comfortable with Cameron Brannigan taking penalties. Probably because the amount he scored against Gillingham. Um, and... Um, I think it was four penalties against Gillingham. I think, you know, I feel much more comfortable with him uh, taking penalties now. Um, but again, like I said, I, I watched the highlights again this morning. To me, it does look like a penalty. I think Shrewsbury probably had a chance of uh, of a penalty. I think they probably had a, a call of a penalty similar, uh, but but it wasn't given. I think Matty Taylor also had a chance for a penalty as well in the first half, but that wasn't given either. So there was a few shouts of penalties through the game. Um Shoes was in the second half. Matty Taylor's first one was, of course, in the first half. And then Ryle Williams was given uh, in the second half, about five minutes to go. Cameron Brannigan steps up and, and, and scores a really, really important penalty and secures a really, really important three points. And the reason why I say that is I think we're, we're coming into a season now, uh, the point in the season now, should I say, where it's, it's really just about the points. And, of course, the performance has to be there. The performance has to be there because that's normally what gets you the points. But in games where you don't play at your best and your performance isn't at its best, it's about getting the points. You come away with a point, you're frustrated, so frustrated. You come away losing the game, you're even more gutted. You come away not playing very well, 
especially in that second half, that we were good in the first half and definitely not as good as we should be in the second half. And we still come away scoring the winning goal in the second half and come away with the three points. That's what matters. And that's what's going to get you those top six places. And that's what we need to aim for, finishing in that top six. And then we just dream on from there. But you've got to get in, the, in, in that top six. And points like that today are certainly, certainly going to secure you places in there because... It's a cliche thing. The best teams, and I'm not saying we are the best teams, but the be- the best team in the league. But certainly, I think we are probably one of the best teams in the league. The best teams win where they don't play well. I think that was a really, really good example of Ox United yesterday. We weren't at our best. We weren't awful. We weren't at our best, and we still came away with three points. And that's credit to the player. They ran. They showed desire. They didn't probably show the quality they can, but they showed the desire, the work rate, the willingness, and that's what you need to get sometimes. And sometimes you've got to outrun the opposition at points. Sometimes you've got to outwork the opposition at points. I think that's what Ox United did today at points in the game and moments in the game there was quality but it certainly certainly was sprinkled throughout with definite definite hard work and dedication and that's what they're going to get you points and that's what got three points for Oxford United yesterday um like I said I mean going forward and, and what this means for Oxford you know as we now head into the season and what I would say link to talk about the, the the performance in the second half we have got to improve on that and it's not all you know it, it's not all a party at this point we we uh, you know, um, you come away with the three points. It is a party atmosphere. It is a really, really exciting place to be. And I'm not taking anything away from that. We've got to remember, we made hard work of it at points. We certainly made hard work of it. And against teams like Rotherham, who we've got coming up, Plymouth, we've got Ipswich next Saturday. These are the teams that will punish us if we play like that in the second half. Hopefully we're going to have some players back from illness and from injury. Uh, but then, of course, we've got people. We've got um, Marcus Brown out. We've got Sam, uh, Sam Baldock out. Uh, Kieran Brown out. Sam Long out. Uh, James Henry out. Jack Stevens out. Elliot Moore out. I mean, those are all very, very key players in Oxford United's squad and a lot of them as well. So hopefully we have a few of them back. We know it's definitely not Baldock, definitely not Brown, um, definitely not Moore. You hope you've got Kieran Brown, Sam Long, Henry and Stevens potentially back fit. And if you do, then of course you, you, you're then able to, to, you know, I mean, shore up the defence a little bit, maybe put a few more centre backs in at centre back and not have any. And I don't think Messina did anything wrong yesterday, but I, I, I definitely don't feel as comfortable as I did more there. But he's not going to be back either. So maybe put Sam Long back there as well. But however and whatever you do. There were some key players missing yesterday and Oxford had to adapt to that and we did. And with a bit of a makeshift team at points, I thought we made the most of that really, really well. But that performance level definitely has to increase when you're playing the likes of Ipswich, Shrewsbury. Sorry, not Shrewsbury. It did against Shrewsbury and we we, we definitely sort of reap the benefits for it. But definitely Rotherham, Ipswich, Plymouth. These are games that are going to ultimately decide our, our fate come the end of the season. And that's when the level of performance must be increased to an extent especially in that, in that second half. You play like it in the first half, in the second half against Ipswich, Plymouth, you're gonna, and, and Rotherham, you're going to cause serious, serious issues. That wants to mention MK Dons as well. We've got some absolutely gigantic games coming up and we've got to up the performance slightly, le- slightly level slightly, I think, if we want to really, really compete for 90 minutes against those sides because those teams are going to cause problems for 90 minutes. You know, there's not going to be where they, they maybe don't have a good sort of 10, 20 minutes. They, if they're not going to play well, they're going to not play well for about five minutes. And you can still punish them at that point. So I think it's really, really important that throughout the game, we're always causing problems. We're always showing our quality because there will be, and if there is a drop-off, there will be punishments and there will be consequences for that in terms of in terms of other teams punishing us and, and, and scoring goals and, and piling on the pressure. So that has to be improved. And Phil Carmson will, will definitely, definitely look back on that. And he'll, he'll know that. And he'll have to understand that. Um, but again, Shrewsbury showed that goal in the second half, and we definitely, definitely did dealt with that. Other than conceding the goal, we then did have to react. But I did feel that we were reactive. We had to go and get that winning goal. Could we be proactive a little bit more and tighten up a defensively, stop the cross for the goal, go gain a bit more control, go and get that second. But we had to react to their goal. And that's what I mean about being proactive instead of reactive and how successful you can be if you become proactive instead of reactive. I think that, that's what I'm trying to say from that. But ultimately, in terms of the day itself, a fantastic atmosphere from both sets of fans, a brilliant away end, a brilliant, brilliant three points. Um, and again, we're getting to the point of the season now where it's, you know, on to Saturday. On to Saturday. A huge game against Ipswich um, at the weekend. And it's going to it's gonna be a really, really big game. They drew to Pompey uh, yesterday. So they're going to be really, really hoping. It's them knocking on the door to finish in that top six. We'll need to be back at our best against Saturday. But nonetheless, it's important. We got those wins. We got that three point. And Oxford United are going to be really, really, really excited now as we head into the next weekend action. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Jets from the Young Fan Podcast. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Subscribe, leave a like if you're new. I'll see you all very, very soon. See you in a bit.